Ready? Um, I've been waiting for something like the Apple Pencil for ages. Um, having spent some time trying to draw with a uh, wobbly stylus or a, a finger, it, it didn't work out. Um, there are flaws, there are, there are things that aren't quite uh, up to scratch, but, but it won't be long uh, before the Apple Pencil is almost everything that you would need. Um, one of the nice surprises um, along this particular journey was uh, discovering Procreate, which is a really terrific drawing app and which I, I've used all the time I've been working on um, with the Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro. Uh, I'd like to point out that in, in the videos that we're putting out, they're, they're not tutorials. What they are is um, an expression of me enjoying myself working with these particular, this particular piece of machinery and discovering the sorts of things that you can get out of it. Um, <clears throat> The brushes that I use, most of the time I'm using a brush which I downloaded from a, a forum uh, from Procreate. Um, it's called uh, Graphic Pencil Version 2 and it's, uh, it was uh, uh, constructed by a man called Yulrun. Um, congratulations to him, it's, a, it's, it's certainly more versatile than some of the standard pencils and brushes you get from, uh, get from Procreate. Um, the erase and smudge were um, artist crayon. I uh, don't quite know why, it just happened to be the first thing I, I lighted on. I do miss the drag of paper, I do miss the, slow, the slowness of the mark. Um, I, I don't really see how they're going to uh, fix that because plastic on glass is a very, is a very smeary feel. Uh, and what it, what it leads to is the, is the, the fact that the, the discipline of drawing, uh, particularly in respect to hand position, tilt and pressure, have to be more disciplined than with paper. Uh, you, you have to have a, a, a more, what's the word, uh, a, a more mechanical approach. Um, but it's something that, it, that you, do use, you, you do get used to. Um, I do use, in my work, I use references uh, to photographs, uh, use them as references, um, but I must say that uh, most of the stuff I see on the internet that's worked from photographs is, is very photographic and I, I, I simply can't see the point in, in copying photographs. Um, I far prefer to work from life. Um, the, Working from photographs, there's no discovery, there are no accidents, there are no, no real emotions. You don't get frustrated, uh, you don't get angry, you don't get joyful. Um, you just follow, follow a pattern. Drawing from life is not easy, uh, but uh, you can help yourself a lot by choosing, choosing things that you are interested in. Um, either uh, a pose you haven't seen before, or uh, a setup you haven't seen before, or uh, model's clothes, or position, action, um, or as in the case of my portrait one here, uh, somebody with an interesting face. Um, it's uncomfortable working from life. Um, frustrating, lots of wrong turnings, but if you keep your mind to alive to different possibilities and different um, different things that happen during the course and, you, and you, keep, you keep your mind on something, looking for something rather than simply expressing something that you already know. Um, you will achieve something even if it's only practice for the next try. Um, this beautiful young lady is Sarah and she's helping us out by being a model for this video. So uh, let's go. Okay, right, head hand a little bit more that way, that's it. Where are your eyes comfortable? Mm, yeah. Here, so just, just by the side of my head. Okay, so we'll do that, okay? Okay.
One of the great things about this program is that you can use the smudge tool just with your finger and you can set it so that it uh, comes up. Just when you use your finger. That's better. What I'm doing at the moment is is roughing it in, getting the getting the right uh, proportions for the things, getting eyes in the right place. So I'm not actually that that bothered about details of how things look. I'm alternating quite a lot between the the brush tool uh, and the smudge and the eraser because in fact I'm, I'm drawing almost as much with the eraser as, as I am with the uh, as I am with the brush tool. I'll give you an example. Come about about the uh, position in the air like that. That's it. With this smudge tool, you can you can use either either your finger to, to smudge or you can use, put it on the smudge tool and use the pen and um, a pencil rather and you can do much more detail work especially if, you, if you're zooming in like that that's better and one of the things that is really interesting about this is this shadow that's just on the far eye there and it's sort of caused a bit politely obscured by the, the hair that's going in there so that light in there is quite important so let's do this get that in Got to get the eye direction right first. Let's do that. This.
Now, immediately what we've got is a bit of a problem. The eye that should be there and there. So we've got to move. That's it. Now I know everybody, I know that it's not right at the moment, but bear with. Now we've got to get this right, the proportion of the... Yeah. Uh, that should be there. Now, when we have a rest, sorry, we're going to try not to disturb your hair. I know that's not going to be easy, but if you could try and just leave it exactly as it is, I would be grateful. Okay, so that's there. general shape of your head is much better, you'll be pleased to hear. Uh, so let's just bring that jawline down a little bit. It's often a question of just trying things out and seeing what they look like. And uh, that means we've got to move the mouth over, which would be about there. And give it more of an angle. There. And something more. Of a bit of form. Let's try that. One of the things, the new skills that you have to learn is to control the angle of this brush while you're working. Because you can, one of the great advantages is that the angle of the brush along with the pressure will determine the 
the nature of the mark. But it does mean you have to be much more skilled than with conventional materials to, to get the sort of thing that you want. Now what I might do, I think, for the, for the blouse is to use a different brush. Use an ink brush because it's a bit more of a washy effect that I want for that. So if I go to inking, brush pen, and very low. Uh, right. Very low opacity. And we should be able to get some quite nice. Effects there. That should be coming there, okay. Let's go back to Graphite pencil, that's the name. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I meant to get the name of the genius who worked it out. The other thing about drawing from life is that everything gets changing. So you actually get a chance to recompose a lot of the time. So I just did then. That's it, I've had enough now. I expect you have as well. Thank you very much, Sarah. You're welcome. <laughs> Come and have a look, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's good. Mm. Better than it was going to be, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah <laughs> It does look like me. Yeah. Yeah, it couldn't be anybody else, could it? Not with a face like that. <laughs> What we've done is, uh, straight after the session, while well, Sarah, Sarah is still here, um, we've printed off uh, the, uh, uh, the image onto Hannah Muller paper using an, uh, an inkjet printer. Just to show you the sort of immediacy 
of this process and how interesting it is when you scale up these things and uh, see where they go. Sarah, come over here. You stand there. There she is, the girl. Isn't she beautiful? That isn't. That's not a bad likeness, but I can do better. <laughs>